Hi, Abraham. Um, I would like help trying to understand if something is stuck in my vibrational craw. Um, I've had a practice of therapy for about four years, and it grew slowly and steadily. Over that time, I incorporated some meditation classes and seminars. And then about nine months ago, I moved from a situation where I had a very low rent and shared an office to my own office, which is gorgeous, that I manifested with a very high rent. And my intention was that I would build my business, pay for the rent, and increase my income. And I made this move before I was in alignment with this and realized afterwards. And... Um, I would like to come into a greater alignment with my desire to have a thriving business. And I'd like some help with that. Well, tell us how you can be happy under these conditions. Well, and I've thought of that. How I can be happy is my husband's the main breadwinner for the family. So if I don't make a lot of money, I could do this for a couple of years. So I'm not so under... So I have leeway. Yes, I'm not under terrible stress. Um, so why doesn't that boost you into instant happiness? Because I feel... Guilty um, because I made a bad decision. No, well, you, well not that. Um, I feel bad that I haven't gotten into alignment with it, but I feel like if I was making the money I made when I only paid a little bit of rent, I feel bad I'm not making the money. Even though we're not eating noodles every night or anything, I do have guilt about not making the money but I also feel like well this is a really good investment you know well how about doing this. how about I put myself true I took action before lining up the energy so I put myself in a little bit more discomfort than was necessary yes. but in all discomfort there's the step one factor so I've launched a bigger rocket and that rocket of desire for more income dovetails with the other rockets of a thriving practice. And so I haven't done anything wrong. I've just stepped out in a bold way. And I didn't do anything that put us in financial jeopardy. So there isn't anything wrong with what I've done. And so maybe I'm in the perfect place. Maybe it's unfolding exactly right. Well, did I mention that my business is has decreased greatly since I made this move. My heart was beating when I got up here. I don't know if I mentioned that, but my as soon as I signed the lease, the business took a dive. Well, it, sometimes that happens, especially as we've already said, and we don't want to rub this in too much, mm -hmm. but we talked about it earlier that when you take action before you've lined up energy, sometimes there is a little sort of gap. And so if if that is the case, and of course it is, you're saying that it is, then that means that you were more out of alignment in this taking on this new commitment than your words imply. And so there's still some coming into alignment. And that's why the answer to the question, why, how is it that I can be happy in this situation, will serve you so well. So you say, well, it is a really good investment just in terms of real estate it's a really good investment in terms of my business it's a good investment in terms of letting people uh, have a nice place to come to it's a lovely place for me to spend time and when I'm going to spend so much time in the place it's nice that it's a time that feels this good and there's nothing about this decision that is wrong in any way there's just I'm just in this interim place where I am allowing the manifestation to catch up with the, the desire and and the way that this came about, I could feel that this came into place. In other words, I had a vision for it and the universe yielded it to me. And I sensed that if I could have kept my vibration on that clean level, like 
like it was when I attracted the place to begin with that I wouldn't have lost any momentum and it would have continued. But so what? I am where I am. I can pick the momentum up from wherever I am. You never get into your vehicle and say, Jerry and Esther have noticed with their monster bus, it's very, very heavy. It's so heavy, in fact, that when they go through some toll booths, it won't give them a ticket because they're overweight and they have to turn around and go back through it again very slowly. Uh, gingerly, Esther says, we'll just step over the, the, the scales. It works. <laughs> so, uh, but this big machine that weighs so much sometimes takes a little bit of time to get the momentum really up to speed. But still, even with that, they never ever say to each other, let's never stop this machine again. They never say, don't stop it, it's hard to get going. <laughs> Because they understand, even though it is easier to keep it rolling at 85 miles an hour, don't tell anyone, <laughs> that they can come to a stoplight and still get it going again. And so can you. Okay. And then what I'd like a little guidance about is I've listened, obviously, today and I've heard your tapes. I say, oh, I should do this. Oh, I'll do this. Oh, I'll do this. And then I just think I'm scattered. So, like, do what, do what, do what? What do oh, you mean? I'm like, trying too hard. I got to make the 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 hose, you know, the stream. I've got to bask more. Um, well, it, never don't never mind how you get there. Just focus upon one bottom line thing. I want to find a way I can feel better. Esther sat in her funk the other day. It was more than a funk. She felt really terrible, and she opened her book. The Amazing Power of Deliberate Intent. And then she opened the other book, The Ask and It Is Given, and she just sat and looked at the first page of several processes. And she said, no, 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 no. In other words, she could feel that one didn't feel like a good fit for where she was. That one didn't feel like a good fit for where she was. In other words, she just sort of stood in her own juices for a while as she tried to find something that would give her some sense of relief. And when she hit upon in the second book this what is the situation and how does it feel, she could feel a little bit of relief begin to wash over her even as she opened the book to those pages. And the longer she stayed focused, the better she felt. In other words, there's no wrong way to go about anything. Just don't try to do it all at once. Every process that we have offered, and many that are still to come, we are eternal spewers of processes. Every one of them is written with the intention of helping you to close that vibrational gap. There just isn't one that won't help you if you'll focus upon it. But all of them are not designed necessarily for right where you are on the emotional scale. So one of them will work one time and it will not necessarily work another time. It sort of be depends on where you are. So. But you've got 15 minutes, just about any time you need to, that you can sit until you begin to feel some relief. And we know that if you understand that your goal is just to feel some relief, you can find something that gives it to you every single time. The thing that we like about the majority of the discussions that we've had here today, because this is the work, is that it might make you feel a little lonely in the sense that there's really no one taking you by the hand and leading you to your better feeling like you want your mother to do or like you'd like a dear friend to do or a therapist to do. It really is inside personal work. You, but the really tremendous upside of that is that once you show yourself two or three times only, how much better you can feel just by doing the work, now you're liberated forevermore. Now you're, you're not afraid of going somewhere. In other words, there's a tendency to step out like you did and get stung a little bit to decide, I'm never going to do that again. Oh boy, that was unpleasant. I'm never going to do that again. And we say, we don't want you to say, I'm never going to do that again. We want you to say, I'll probably do that again, but I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to have an ear to the ground and be more of the way, more aware of the way I feel as I'm moving along, you see. You are a self-empowered being. And any self-empowered being, it includes all of you, who is not applying your self-empowerment doesn't feel that good, you see. But there is, there is nothing to fill that void. Nothing to fill that void other than becoming self-empowered. Your mother can't feel it. When she tries, you resent her. 
If she doesn't care enough, you resent her. If she cares too much, you resent her. If, if people try to help you too much, you resent them. If they don't help you enough, you resent them. Isn't that the way it goes? In other words, nobody can please you because they're not the ones that are supposed to be doing it. You're the one that is supposed to be doing it. So we see you as you begin this work. In the beginning, you say, oh, it feels so good to realize that I am the creator of my own experience. You feel liberated and exhilarated and then you say, wait, it's all up to me. <laughs> so we see you at first exhilarated about the idea and then getting all timid about your ability or your worthiness to do this, you see. And we say, oh, just jump in and figure it out and stop making such a big hairy deal about it. In other words, just, just jump in and make yourself feel better and then make yourself feel better again and then make yourself feel better again and then make yourself feel better again. And pretty soon you'll be so liberated that you won't fear not feeling good. We don't want to teach you to be afraid of negative emotion. We want you to be pleased that negative emotion is giving you vivid indication that you're not in alignment with something that you really want. We don't see you putting very many happy face stickers on the gas gauge of your car because you don't want to see the tank read empty. Oh, it's so disturbing to see that I'm out of gas. Jerry and Esther filled up the monster bus yesterday. $785. They need a happy face sticker on their gas gauge. So you suggest I go to the books and look through the processes and look for the inspiration for which one's going to fit me on that day. In that moment. In that not moment. on that day. Sorry. In, in this moment. moment. In this moment. Okay. And then I just have another question. I have wondered, is this an issue of worthiness for me? Is this an issue of, I don't think I just, this has been a dream of mine since I was like 10 or 12. Is it an issue that I, I don't feel worthy or that I don't feel worthy of my dream? I don't feel worthy of the money, making the money? No, 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 and no. Okay. Okay. No, I'm, I'm glad because Next I... Next question. Well, I, then what is it? Yeah, I guess what is it? <laughs> Thank you. That's a good question. <laughs> we thought it was extremely good. <laughs> It is, it is something that almost everybody does. And it is the thing that trips you all up more than all other things put together. It is that you've trained yourself to give more of your attention to what is than where you're going. Mm -hmm. What is just gets your attention. Where I'm at, 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 where I'm at. Why can't, I find, why can't I find a gardener that understands that he can't put copper sulfate on my stones? Why, why can't I find someone who understands that he should not use that kind of chemical anywhere near my stones? Why can't I find someone who understands that they shouldn't do that? Why can't I find someone who knows better? Why can't I find somebody that really knows what they're doing? Why can't I? Why can't I find somebody? Why can't I? Why can't I find somebody? Why can't I find some? Why can't I find somebody? Why can't I find somebody who can plumb my washing machine so that it drains properly? Why can't I find somebody? Why can't I? Why can't I find somebody? Why can't I? Why can't I find somebody? Why can't I find somebody? And we say, and so as you observe where you're at and you activate a vibration about where you are, the universe cannot give you anything other than what's activated within you. It's just a matter of looking so keenly at what is that it's the dominant vibration, you see. It's interesting because we see many of you, before you have any business at all, imagining one. And in your imagery, it's pure. 20 years down the road, remember? Bright, wide open, pure vibration. And, and then you begin framing it up in your mind. Oh, it will look like this and it will feel like this and people will come and we'll interchange activity on this way and it will be profitable for me in this way and beneficial to them in that way. Pure energy, pure energy, pure energy, pure energy, pure energy. And so the majority of your creations, whether it's a relationship you're building, an empire you're building, no matter what it is, the bulk of it is built in the ethers long before you gather the first board and build the first structure. In other words, you have created something magnificently and it's over there in vibrational escrow just waiting for you. So then 
you move into the building and almost the moment that you move into the building your vibration is not as pure as it was while you were dreaming it because now you've got a building to maintain now you've got a building to pay for now you've got a building to justify now you've got a building that you need to do the work in order to justify being there in other words you you want your business to catch up with your building so to speak and or or as you get employees then you have uh, in other words it's easier to be pure in your vibration when it's all in your mind than when you've got this business that you're now focused upon.